Hello folks, this is Cassie at the Clinton Public Library and I'm coming to you with our next state by state. This time it is Illinois. Illinois was admitted to the Union on December 3rd, 1818, making it the 21st state of the Union. Its largest city is Chicago, but its capital is Springfield. In fact, a uh, fun fact about Chicago, it is the top, it is the third largest metro area in the U.S. Illinois takes up an area of about 57,900 square miles. Its highest elevation is Charles Mound, which is 1,235 feet above sea level, and its lowest elevation is the confluence of the Mississippi and Ohio River, which is 280 feet above sea level. This is the flag of Illinois. Uh, it was adopted on June 27th, 1969, making it 51 years old. It is the seal of Illinois on a white background. The ribbon in the eagle's mouth actually has the state motto, which is State Sovereignty National Union. The word Illinois was added to the flag in 1970. The state bird for Illinois is the Cardinal, Cardinalis Cardinalis. Uh, it's also kind of known as the red bird, common cardinal, red cardinal, or just cardinal. Uh, it has a very large uh, ranging uh, range. <laughs> Basically, it can be found in almost every single, in fact, I think it might be found in every single East Coast uh, state, most of the Midwest, and even up in some of the parts of the mountains out west. The cardinal gets its English name from the uh, cardinals of the Roman Catholic Church who wear distinctive red robes and capes, very similar to how the male cardinals are all bright red. As with most uh, birds like this, the females are much less brightly colored and are more of a reddish olive color. They are mainly granivorous, which means they eat uh, mostly grain, but they'll also eat uh, insects and fruit. They can grow to be up to nine inches or more with a wingspan ranging anywhere from about nine and a half to 12 inches. This bird is also where the uh, St. Louis Cardinals derive their name from. And in fact, it is the mascot for a lot of colleges. A lot of them. Uh, and the cardinal is the state bird of seven U.S. states. Uh, Illinois is just the first one we're going over, but we'll also hit them in uh, coming up. Going along with the animal theme, Illinois has one of the most deadly animals in North America as its state mammal. That animal is the white-tailed deer, Odocoelius virginianus, white tail or virgin, known as the white tail or the Virginia deer. Reason why this animal is considered one of the most deadly in the United States traffic accidents. In 2009, the insurance industry estimated that 2.4 million deer vehicle collisions had occurred uh, in the previous two years. So basically, from uh, 2007 to 2009, 2.4 million deer collisions and with an estimated damage cost of over seven billion dollars and causing 300 human deaths so yes very dangerous animal uh, during the mating season you can very easily tell a male from a female because the male is the one who gets the rack of antlers uh, 
the female does not. In fact, there is a special term for a buck without branching antlers. They're called spike horned or spike bucks or spike bucks or spikes or spikers. Uh, but yes, the antlers do tend to branch out. And if you know anyone who um, hunts, you will often hear them hunt deer. You'll often hear them talk about like an eight point buck or a six point buck. That's how many branches the uh, antlers pop out into. Illinois has a state grass. Andropogon girardi. Also called big blue stem, tall blue stem, blue joint, and turkey foot. It is a perennial warm season bunch grass and it tolerates a lot of different soil conditions. Uh, the uh, let's see, and the height of the um, plant, depending on soil and moisture, can go anywhere from 3 feet to nearly 10 feet. The stem usually turns blue or purple as it matures, which is how you get the name Big Blue Stem or Tall Blue Stem or Blue Joint. Um, it does bloom in the summer and seed in the fall. It has a flower cluster of two to six uh commonly but most commonly three narrow spiked uh racemes alternately arranged along the top of the stem uh, it somewhat rec uh, resembles a turkey's foot hence being called turkey foot and that is how it spreads its seeds gets its uh gets pollinated and spreads its seeds this grass and its variants are very good forage for horses cattle and wild animals while not considered the highest quality native forage found in the united states it is pretty good it is a uh, long been been considered desirable and ecologically important grass by cattle ranchers and rangeland ecologists. In fact, due to its high biomass, big blue stem is being considered as a possible feedstock for ethanol production. The state flower of Illinois is the violet, which is a type of viola, which is a genus of flowering plants in the violet family, uh, viola, viola cae. Say a. Basically, it's usually the ones that we're talking about are the ones that are the small flowered annuals or perennials that are usually like a purpley color. In horticulture, the term pansy is usually used for the multicolored ones or the bit ones with the big, big flowers. They're the same family of plants. There are both violas, but you get pansies when you have those big multicolored ones, and you have violets when you have tiny little flowers. Now, there are a ton of different species of viola and violets. I'm not going to focus on any one of them. If you guys want to know more about them, I suggest going to a nature center or a gardening center to find out more about them. Now, as a general thing about the whole viola species. They are very important to the uh, life cycle of Lepidoptera, which includes, you know, the giant leopard moth, the uh, yellow underwing, high brown fritillary, fritillary, and other sorts of moths and butterflies. Uh, in fact, it's often used as an obligate host plant by a lot of an obligate host plant, though they don't uh, tend to lay their eggs directly onto the violets. Uh, they flower in early spring, so we should be seeing some of them pop up fairly soon. Now, when uh, violets or violas go to seed, they do this thing where it goes, and the seeds are often uh, dispersed 
Oh, the fruit. They've been reported as being dispersed up to five meters away from the parent's plant. And then usually things like ants and other insects might carry them even further. So for being such a tiny innocuous plant, violets are really rather important when it comes to things like oh, uh, habitat restoration because they are uh, relied upon so much by so many different kind of butterfly and moth species, as I said before. But they're also important in things like bogs, dry hill prairies. They just cover such a wide ground that they are just very important for the habitat remediation. So you might want to think about growing some in your garden someday. Okay, we've hit all of the symbols that I'm going to go over. There is only one fact thingy that I am doing that is involving Chicago, and it is this. Yes, the goat curse was broken. Okay, now that I got my uh, inner cubby span uh, locked away, we're going to talk about something that a lot of people don't really... Uh, place as being in Illinois. That's rock climbing. Yes, rock climbing. Turns out, because of the uh, geographical and geological way Illinois was shaped, there are some really awesome rock formations out there. I mean, well, look at this one. This is, uh, it looks like it would be like somewhere out in like the Appalachians or something. No, this is from Illinois. Uh, this is from Shawnee National Forest. And there are hiking trails and rock climbing trails and things that are all different levels all throughout Illinois. If you're interested in doing rock climbing, there are rock climbing schools, such as uh, there's one at Dapers Bluff in southern Illinois, another one near Lamont Quarries. Basically, the areas of Illinois that I'm talking about are a lot of limestone formations, which, if you don't know your geology very well, uh, limestone is a porous mineral rock. A sedimentary rock, composed mostly of calcite and aragonite. Now, the thing about limestone is it erodes pretty well to water. So a lot of these uh, limestone formations have been caused by water. See, the limestone is nice and porous, which means it has a bunch of different little holes in it. And then the water gets down into those pores and it starts wearing away at the uh, rock that's there. And then there's also, since where in this area of the country, there's also the three freeze and thaw, which water can get down into the rock and then suddenly it freezes. And when water freezes, it expands. So because of that, that can cause pieces of rock to shear off. Well, all of these formations that I am showing you about that are good for rock climbing or just, you know, hiking to go see what they look like, were formed over millions of years thousands, millions of years by water. Isn't nature great? Going along the same vein as the, as the uh, rock climbing, and we're still sticking with kind of extreme sporty things, or at least what I consider to be extreme sports, because you would not catch me doing this next one. Scuba diving. You know all those limestone that I was talking about? Well, limestone is used as a building material. So that means you have quarries, which means you have really, really deep holes in the ground. Well, there are some places that have turned their quarries into scuba diving centers. I mean, if when you think of Illinois, you're not really going to be thinking of scuba diving because, you know, the nearest coast is like 500 miles away. But there are tons of scuba diving uh, schools or learning centers or just places that are really awesome. Uh, one of them is uh, Mermet Springs. 
Mermet Springs. Now, interesting part about Mermet Springs is there is a Boeing 727 fuselage in there. And it's been hollowed out so you know you won't get caught or trapped in there. But it was originally used in the filming of a movie called U.S. Marshals. Where there's a uh, prisoner on a uh, on an airplane. But the airplane is somehow... Um, damaged and the pilots attempt an emergency water landing on the Ohio River. Well, it's an emergency landing and they end up in the Ohio River and then the guy escapes. Well, the people who own Mermet Springs actually bought the uh, fuselage and took it to a quarry and now it's part of their uh, whole neat underwater stuff that they've got going on there. And even funny enough, there's a, another place called High Lake that has uh, spring-fed waters and that was also an abandoned limestone quarry. Um, it was bought by a local and they shut off the pumps and it became a wonderful dive, uh, dive location. There's no boats or fishing allowed there so you can dive without worry. But I think my favorite has to be Pearl Lake. And that is because there is a 33-foot yellow, uh, 33 yellow submarine that you can check out. Of course, I'd never do it because I don't like the water and I know scuba dive. Okay, our final neat place of, on this video. It's a local one. Local as in it's really easy for those of us who live in the Clinton area to get to. In fact, a lot of people in the Clinton area have probably already been through this place. I'm talking about Casey, Illinois, where they seem to have an issue with keeping things small. In fact, their motto might even be called Big Things Small Town, which I encourage everyone to go to BigThingsSmallTown.com to check out even more of these. Uh, basically, it's a bunch of roadside attractions. And, well, they have the world's largest, oh, let's see, the world's largest wind chime, the world's largest golf tee, rocking chair, wooden shoes, pitchfork, mailbox, key, gavel, swizzle spoon, golf driver, barbershop, pole, teeter-totter, crochet hook, knitting, and knitting needles, as well as a bunch of other just plain old big things, including a giant pokeball with a Pikachu in it. Let's see, what's some of the other things? They've got they got a birdcage with a little swing inside of it, and they've got, oh, a giant ruler thing, and a mousetrap, and a rocking horse, and a pencil, and a cactus, and an ear of corn, and a pitchfork, and basically, folks, there's a bunch of big things in this small town. So yeah, the, st the city has ended up in the Guinness Book of World Records multiple multiple times and it's a very uh and they like to encourage people to come down and see their small town charm and their big things again if you want to know more about it you can check out big things small town.com where they actually have lists and pictures of multiple of most of the uh big things they have in that town Okay, moving on to the authors, which is the real reason these videos even get made. We've got only a handful, because there are so many authors from Illinois. Oh my goodness, you have no idea. Uh, these are ones that are have their th uh, books available in our collection in some way, shape, or form, whether it be audiobooks, regular books, ebooks, playaways. Just we have the books. We have all the books listed in this. So, in fact, one of my favorite authors is in this list, so yay! So let us get started. Remember, the person has to be born in, raised in, or have a significant connection to the state. Well, let's get started.
Thanks everyone for listening. This has been State by State by the Clinton Public Library. Uh, remember to like, subscribe, ring the bell so that you can get a notification whenever we post up a new video. Next video is drum roll. Okay, no drum roll. Uh, basically, this one is going to be very important to us because it is Indiana. Yep, that's right. The next video that we make is going to be about my about our home state. So tune in and we'll see all kinds of stuff that we didn't know about Indiana and the bunch of the authors who live here. Thanks and you guys have a nice week.